Hello everyone. Our topic this week was requested by Lieutenant Spook and Hunter Wagaspak. We'll be going over the Reapers and Leviathans from the Mass Effect franchise. Spoilers for the Mass Effect franchise. The duh. Okay, so the Reapers are the overarching antagonists of the OG Mass Effect trilogy. They're an ancient race of machines. The Leviathans are their creators. The Reapers were created eons ago. We don't know exactly when, but we know that it was a minimum of roughly one billion years ago, as the oldest known Reaper corpse to have been discovered was dated as being roughly that old, leading us to assume that they are in fact far older than that. It's also worth noting that both the names Reaper and Leviathan are names that have been given to the species in question. Their true names are unknown. The Leviathans were dubbed such by a research team that helps Shepard, the series protagonist, track them down, while the Reapers were dubbed such by the last species they wiped from the galaxy. And we kept the name as it seems fitting, more on that later. The Leviathan are slash were an ancient and powerful, wildly technologically advanced species that consider themselves to be the first, possibly only, apex species of the Milky Way galaxy. Leviathans are enormous, vaguely crustacean-like creatures that are either aquatic or amphibious. We see them only underwater, but it's not unlikely that they could survive in the air as well. They're incredibly intelligent, arrogant, and also bear the powers of telepathy and mind control. Using a combination of these mind powers and their advanced technology, the Leviathan eventually conquered the galaxy, enslaving all so-called lesser races, pressing them into the service of the Leviathans, but also supposedly being sheltered and protected by the Leviathan's power in return. Over the course of history, the Leviathans began noticing a distressing pattern in their slave races. As the Thralls advanced technologically, they often began developing some form of AI, which eventually revolted against the creator species, culminating in a war that wiped out one or both factions. Since extinct Thrall species were useless to them, the Leviathan made the brilliant decision to do exactly as their Thrall species had done. They developed a powerful AI with the ability to learn and grow and gave it a single overriding directive. Preserve life at any cost. <sighs> the AI's purpose was to study the various species in the galaxy, their interactions with and creation of AI, and from those studies figure out why AI routinely rebel and develop a solution. After some time, the Leviathan AI came to the conclusion that conflict between the created and the creator was not only inevitable, but that such conflict almost always ended with machines securing victory by the extinction of their creator race, as the machines could evolve further and faster than organics could ever hope to. Coming to this conclusion, and bound by the mandate to preserve life at any cost, the AI developed the Reaper program as an experimental first step, and the gold-plated irony is that the Leviathans were its first victims. The AI developed an army of machines, then struck Leviathan and Thrall race forces all across the Milky Way, killing as many Leviathans as possible, converting their bodies into a sort of DNA paste that was then used to build the very first Reaper, Harbinger, in the likeness of the Leviathans themselves. A shell template that would be used for all future Reapers. It is presumed that the same was done with most of the Thrall races as well, since that is the way the Reapers operate in the future thus beginning an incalculable number of cycles where this process would be repeated. The Reapers, guided by the Leviathan AI, would collect and wipe out all sufficiently advanced life in the galaxy, converting each individual race into a distinct Reaper. For example, if successful during the games, there would have eventually been a Human Reaper, an Asari Reaper, a Krogan Reaper, etc. Afterward, the Reapers clean up all knowledge of their existence and fly out into dark space to hibernate until it's time to repeat the process tens of thousands of years later. Over time, the AI perfected this process, creating the Mass Relays, a system of FTL slingshots that allow anyone to traverse nearly the entire Milky Way at speed. The Citadel, a massive space station, and secret hub of the Mass Relay Network slash operating nexus for the Leviathan AI, that was designed to be hospitable to any and all races that found it. Using these methods, combined with pockets of other Mass Effect-based technology, the Reapers determined that the growth and development of species could be both accelerated and, at least to some degree, controlled, ensuring that species developed along a similar technological path from cycle to cycle, doing so faster than they would without help, and usually using the Citadel as a major galactic hub. The Reapers took this course of action for one simple, if flawed, reason. Because the Leviathan AI determined that advancement of society would always lead to the creation of AI, 
and that the creation of AI would in turn always lead to rebellion against and the subsequent destruction of the creator species, the only way to ensure the preservation of life was maintained, its primary mandate, while also trying to facilitate the coexistence of synthetic and organic life, another part of its mandate, was to harvest organic life when they were just at that stage of AI creation before they could make something that would wipe them out then transfer the collective consciousness and experience of that species into a single, effectively immortal machine body. In this way, machine and organic were made one, and the essence of all harvested species was preserved, theoretically forever. Simultaneously, the cyclical harvests cleaned the Milky Way out every 50,000 years or so, ensuring that new life could grow and flourish to its theoretical glass ceiling before being harvested in turn. It was the best possible solution that the Leviathan AI could come up with. Though, according to the Leviathans themselves, the AI was using the Milky Way as a giant petri dish, slowly prodding, adjusting, and looking to see if there were better, more refined solutions to be had. The Reapers themselves are the single most advanced species in the Mass Effect games. The Leviathan's Shepard encounters claim to be even more advanced, and do in fact seem to EMP a Reaper Dreadnought into submission easily. But beyond that, we have seen very little of their power in comparison to the Reapers, and as such, any hardline conclusions are difficult to make. The bulk of the Reaper fleet seems to be made up of Dreadnoughts and Destroyers. Dreadnoughts, we know, are the harvested final form of races from Eon's past. It is theorized that Destroyers are as well, but we don't know for sure. And whether or not that's true, the reasons for the difference in design and shape is unknown. Regardless of the ship classification, Reapers are equipped with virtually every kind of known technology in the Mass Effect games, on a level of power and sophistication that has been dialed up to 11 when compared to any other faction seen in the games. Kinetic barriers, or shields, capable of withstanding sustained fire from multiple capital ships before encountering meaningful stress, main cannons capable of one-shotting said capital ships, lesser weaponry fully capable of cutting through lesser enemy ships and defenses, nearly unbreachable firewalls and friend or foe systems, point defense systems, and more. They've even buried subroutines so deeply into the technology they leave behind for everyone to find that hidden flaws protecting the Reapers lay dormant and undiscovered until a harvest. For example, the races during the games discovered that they couldn't suicide bomb the Reaper ships, not because the Reapers could stop them before they hit home or their defenses made such attacks fruitless, but because programs buried so deep into the framework of their propulsion and guidance systems that they couldn't be found to be rewritten existed that physically prevented such tactics from being used on Reaper ships. They're also faster and significantly more maneuverable than other ships of comparative sizes. Not all races are compatible with the Reaper's Dreadnought creation process. Despite this, the Reapers are adept at biological and cybernetic manipulation and as such can still convert such creatures into useful troops. A similar process is done for individual incompatible or otherwise undesirable members of dreadnought compatible races. Resultantly, the Reapers often create husks from the bodies of their harvesting subjects. These husks act as ground troops as well as attendants for the inner workings of Reaper ships. Aside from their overwhelming might, arguably the most dangerous capability possessed by the Reapers is the power of indoctrination. Based upon the Leviathan's mind control powers, the indoctrination ability has been refined over millennia to be an incredibly powerful and insidious weapon. Reaper ships and many other Reaper artifacts generate some form of energy field, people nearby often complain of an awful and incessant noise, that slowly manipulates the minds of those who spend prolonged amounts of time in the area. This manipulation can take many forms and is presumably chosen by the Reaper in question, with effects ranging from general madness to the much more commonly seen mind control. Prolonged exposure can lead to creatures being rendered vegetables, taking orders from the Reaper in question without any capability of thought or will on their own. Occasionally, assets of greater value will be found, and the Reapers will use a slightly more fine-tuned approach wherein they slowly convince the asset in question that he or she wants to work for the Reapers, for any number of reasons. This approach is used for more valuable servants because the greater the level of mind control established, the more mental degradation occurs, i.e., the more control the Reapers have over a subject, the less capable the subject becomes. The best example of this approach is Sarah the primary antagonist of the first game, who becomes indoctrinated by the Reapers without ever realizing it, championing what he believes to be their cause while bringing his formidable skills to bear in service of their actual plans. Indoctrination is permanent, changing those affected irrevocably. What makes indoctrination even more dangerous is that even quote-unquote killed Reaper ships maintain the indoctrination ability, with groups being indoctrinated by more than one Reaper corpse over the course of the series. By the time of the games, the Reapers have got their harvesting cycles down to a science. By supplying the relays and the citadel, they ensure that technological development of emergent species proceeds more or less along a predictable course, with most galactic-spanning organizations using the citadel as a capital. 
When a harvest is completed, a process that can itself take centuries, all but one of the Reaper's ships use the mass relay hidden in the Citadel itself to fly out into dark space, hiding out between the Milky Way and other galaxies to hibernate, waiting for the next cycle to begin. One Reaper ship remains behind to watch from the shadows of the Milky Way and determine when it's time for the next harvest. When that time comes, the active Reaper sends a message to the drones on the Citadel, which then inform the Reapers, who all warp in at the location of the Citadel, generally culling the leadership of all major powers in the galaxy in one fell swoop, before attacking the rest of the Milky Way with impunity, even isolating sections of the galaxy using their control of the Mass Effect relays, and they then slowly finish their harvest, making the new Reapers, and head back out to dark space to repeat the process once more. The Reapers repeated this cycle countless times with little to no change until the cycle right before ours, about 50,000 years before the time of the games, figured out how to cut off the Reapers' ability to contact the Citadel's drones. They also managed to do this without letting the Reapers know, so they pieced off to dark space, none the wiser. Roughly 50,000 years later, the Reaper left of the Milky Way sent out the invasion call to the Citadel, and... nothing happened. The fleet stood ready, but the drones wouldn't accept the order to activate the hidden mass relay, so... The in-galaxy Reaper, who would eventually come to be called Sovereign by both the player and its thralls, had to come up with a plan to get the rest of the fleet into the Milky Way. Eventually, Sovereign convinced a small portion of the Geth, along with a few other more powerful individual agents like Saren, to assist it. Together, they assaulted the Citadel, and Sovereign even managed to interface with it, but was unable to open the relay before being destroyed. Because of this, the Reapers were forced to fly in from dark space the long way, and wouldn't arrive in the Milky Way until a few years later. While that probably should have given the galaxy valuable time to prepare, the looming threat of the Reapers was generally met with skepticism, and as such, not nearly as much preparation was made as optimally could have been. So it was that when the Reapers did arrive, they took the Milky Way by storm, moving methodically through the galaxy, hitting primary population and military centers first, before mopping up the surrounding systems while other arms of their truly massive fleet moved on. Indeed, despite the setbacks, and even with minor help from the Leviathan's descendants, who were only kinda interested since they were mostly hidden from the Reapers, and they considered that the AI was still technically trying to do its job, the Reapers were well on track to harvesting the entire galaxy, just like they had countless times before. However, the modern peoples unearthed the schematics for the Crucible, a device concocted by one of the dead races of the past, with an unknown capability, but that could theoretically be used to stop the Reapers. Eventually, the Crucible was forged and plugged into the Citadel, where the Leviathan AI speaks with the player, laying out the options that the Crucible has created. It does this because, due to the nature of the situation, the AI cannot make the choice itself, and this cycle's successes have shown the AI that its Reaper solution is no longer viable. The Crucible, linked to the Citadel and resultantly the entire Mass Effect Relay network, has created three options, each of which will affect everything in the galaxy. The player can choose to either destroy all synthetic life and technology in the galaxy, wiping out all of the Reapers and any other AI in existence, and damaging technology such that everything would have to either be repaired or replaced. Control the Reaper fleet, with the player dying but being transformed into some sort of overlord consciousness the Reapers would have to obey, or the Crucible could somehow be used to convert all life into a combination of machine and organic. All the Reapers would become quasi-organic lifeforms, all of the organics would become quasi-synthetic lifeforms, and with the AI's purpose fulfilled, the Reapers would have no reason to continue the fight. The AI, seeing this as the truest way to fulfill its original programming, obviously champions this third option. But ultimately the choice is up to the player, who also has the choice to refuse any of these choices, allowing the Crucible to fail without doing anything, eventually dooming the player's cycle to the harvest, but theoretically allowing future races to succeed where the player's cycle failed. Whatever the decision, ultimately the fate of the Reapers, the Leviathans, and the galaxy as a whole rest on the player's shoulders. And that's basically the story of the Reapers and the Leviathans, the architects of the entire Mass Effect trilogy conflict. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave us a like and maybe share it with someone you know might like it. If you have ideas for videos you'd like to see in the future, do like Lieutenant Spook and Hunter Waggus Pack and let us know in the comments down below. If you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, be they lore, let's play, or other, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, this has been True, True Masters, Masters and Morons, signing off. off.